Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about growing squash and zucchini in your garden. Some of the favorite plants for people to grow are your summer squash. Now, this is one plant. First tip, quick tip. You only want to put one plant in a, about a three foot space. This is located in my four foot by four foot raised bed sitting here on the corner. It's going to get twice as big as this. They get really large, so you don't want to be growing two plants together. Just one plant per space, about a three foot space. You also want to water these regularly, like every other day. They really get massive root systems, they get really big, and watering these every other day when you're not having rain, or every couple of days when you're getting rain, really makes a big difference for the plant's production. You want to take a look at the plant. This plant's about 45 to 50 days old. It's starting to produce. At this point, when it's about this size, this is when a lot of diseases and problems start rolling in. So let's talk about that. If you want to check the video description and the end screen, I will put a video in there that shows you how to direct seed squash and zucchini into the garden. It goes over the planting hole and a lot of information. And I'll actually be visiting the plant from that video in a second. So again, 45 to 50 days old, we begin to assess the plant. This pattern is perfectly normal for this variety of zucchini. So this pattern is nothing to worry about. You need to know your plant. When we go over to the other squash plant, it's going to just have plain green leaves. It might be a little bit harder to recognize powdery mildew or problems on here, but this plant looks pretty good. The powder right there is something I put on for insect dust. We'll be talking about that too in a second. Same thing in there. That's some insect dust. So you take a look at the leaf. Looks pretty good. When your plants get to this size, the squash bug starts to roll in. And they usually hang out down at the bottom of your plant. If you see them, you want to kill them off. I'll be showing you how to put dust right down at the bottom there. And hopefully that kills off some of the squash bugs. They're really hard to kill. But you also have beetle problems and other issues. At this point, you want to be taking the leaves and flipping them over. And you can see right here, those are squash bugs squash bug eggs and the best thing to do is to really just scrape them off and remove them so inspecting your plants is really important you will really decrease the pressure and problems caused by squash bugs by looking on the undersides of the leaves and again when you look there are these orangey shiny eggs definitely remove those and that's a great way to control one of the biggest pests for your squash zucchini the squash bug the other thing you want to kind of learn is the difference between a male and female flower and pollination. So right here, that is a baby zucchini plant with a flower on top. All the females have zucchini under there or, you know, a yellow squash or something. You can see another example right there. Baby squash, flowers going to form. The, pl the flower right here, notice there's no squash under there. That's a male flower. It's just a stem. In order for your squash to produce and get to the full size, it has to get pollinated. So this flower has to open, the female flower has to open when a male flower, like right here, there's no zucchini there, no squash there. They both have to open and the bee will cross, well, not really cross pollinate, but it'll take the pollen from the male flower, put it into the female flower, and you will end up getting a beautiful zucchini. When, when they it get to about this size, the zucchini itself is going to stay viable, which means it's going to continue to grow until you pick it. When they're about this size, they may start to yellow on the tip, maybe even brown out and get mushy right there, and that means it just didn't pollinate. So the female flowers have the zucchini. If it doesn't get pollinated, it continues to grow, and it grows a little bit more and when you start seeing this yellow right here, that's probably a point of concern that this zucchini is not going to continue and grow to size. It's going to start browning and die off. That's not a disease. That's not a problem, except for pollination just didn't happen. When you're putting dust down on these plants, you don't want to throw dust all around on the flowers. That's where the good insects are going to be. And if they contact the dust, any dust, organic, not organic, is going to kill all insects just about. So. You don't want to put it on the flowers. We definitely want to just start dropping the dust right down there on the stem. Beetles will crawl through it down there. Or you put some on the outer leaves. If you have something like on cucumbers, you get cucumber beetles. They'll run through that dust. This is going to be away from the flowers and it's going to really reduce the potential harm 
to beneficial insect, insects. Let's go ahead and put down some of the dust. And before we get to the dust, just looking at the zucchini right here, you can see that it's larger down here, nice and rounded, and you can see this one that's probably going to fail really tapers off and comes to a point. So if you see something like that, just anticipate that it's going to die off. I like using an organic dust. This is Captain Jack's dead bug dust. Check out my Amazon shop linked for options. And it's just as fine tip, it's spinosad. And I like to just put it right down there at the bottom. That is where squash bugs hang out. And again, dust don't work tremendously well on the squash bug, but other beetles, other problems, they're all gonna climb up through there. If you have other issues, I like putting some of the dust right on the outer leaves, just like that. Nothing, you know, really fancy. Beetles are really active at night, so they're going to come and they're going to crawl through that. And I would put like some right there, maybe some over on this leaf, and then some right down there. That really covers this plant for active beetles. And again, I'm going to stress, dusts, no matter if they're organic, or otherwise kill potentially all insects. So you really want to stay away from the flowers. I would do the dusting maybe once a week. You know, if it rains, maybe come back, do it again. But this will really set your plant up for care. And again, you're going to check the undersides every couple of days, look for those eggs and just remove them. At planting, the planting hole was really set up well. Shovel full of compost, handful of organic granular fertilizer, any of them works. Just really mixed well through there. It was watered in with a water-soluble fertilizer. At the 45-50 day mark, your plant begins to produce. It's getting a lot of nutrients from what was already prepared in there. In about, a in about another two weeks, I will just sprinkle down some organic granular around the plant. That's the top dressing. Water it in with a water-soluble fertilizer, and that will really be enough to keep this zucchini plant going, you know, until it dies out. I also like putting down mulch. Mulch keeps the moisture in. The root systems will get massive, as I was saying, and you really want to keep these watered maybe more often than you think, and that will keep the plant producing. Let's go over to that second plant. One more quick point before we go over to the other plant. If you find one cluster of eggs, and I put the dust down here, but didn't check this leaf, you want to check all the leaves, because if you find one cluster of eggs, there's going to be two or three more. And here's an, another close-up of the eggs from the squash bug. So we want to remove those. So check all the leaves every couple of days. This is one of the plants from the video. This is a Black Beauty zucchini. I put in two seeds. I already thinned it down to one plant because remember you just want one plant in this space. Notice the leaf pattern is different. It's different. It's a different variety than the one across the way and it doesn't have all those white markings. So you're going to have most of the time a really green leaf and you're going to be looking for patterns on there for powdery mildew or mildews. This plant is exactly 22 days old, started from seed. So you don't, if you're on a budget, you don't have to go and buy squash zucchini transplants just plant them as seeds they grow really really quickly so in about 14 to 21 days this plant's going to start to produce it'll look like the other one when the plants are this small the squash bugs don't really hang out and insects usually leave them alone but you want to be inspecting and kind of looking for the same things what you're really looking for is mostly green you know this pattern here who knows what that is? It's not something to over worry about. It's nice growth, nice and green. Things will be fine. The flowers haven't started forming yet. If you wanted, if you have high pressure of insects, put a little bit of the dust right there. You could put a little bit down at the bottom and that might help, you know, control some of the beetles or other issues like that. But this guy, you don't really have to do much to. What I would add to this is mulch. This is a bed that's under construction right now. If I turn this over, you s oh look, and there are some squash bug eggs, and we're gonna just remove those right there with my hand. So even this small, the potential for eggs and problems is there, but I wanted to show you the dirt. By putting down the mulch, not only does it conserve moisture, but it stops soil splash from getting up there. And that's potential if you have some earthborne diseases, keeps that disease, that fungal spore from getting up on your leaf, also, a lot of dirt on the underside of the leaves can sort of block the way your plant leaf breathes, so the plant might die off. 
or not the plant, but the leaf might die off. So what you want to do is put down mulch and that just keeps the soil from splashing up on the underside of your plant. So these guys are good to go. There are two people in my family. You really don't need more than two squash plants, zooks or yellow squash, for a family of two. When these start producing, you're going to have a lot. So another strategy that I recommend, instead of planting like six summer squash plants right now, maybe do two, maybe three. When these get to the point that they're producing, like the plant that I showed you originally, maybe two or three weeks past that, when it's been producing, the plant's getting older, it's getting beat up, drop more seeds in somewhere. Because in 45 days from dropping seed, the next plant will be ready to produce. And what that does is keeps the squash and zucchini plants rolling into your garden over the whole summer. So while this plant here might get beat up from a disease that comes at this time, you know, later June, early July, new seeds that you plant later in July maybe grow stronger and do better because the disease cycle is gone. It, it maybe goes away, say in August. So by putting in successions of your squash and zucchini, you'll get a continued harvest. You don't have to care for sick or dying plants. And by putting them in, say, May, June, July, and even middle of August in some areas, you get this ongoing supply of squash, zucchini, plants stay healthy, they keep producing, and you just get a better harvest overall. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com, and please subscribe. I'll be doing a video series on growing squash and zucchini in 20-gallon grow bags or in containers. Thanks for watching.